This morning's message comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter of the first six verses. And I've entitled it, Is Your Priority Repentance? We, we all know about John the Baptist. We all know that he came baptizing and, and giving a message of repentance. And that's who John was. We find it in those verses in the third chapter. In the 15th year of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, a year when Pontius Pilate was a governor of Judah, Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, Philip his brother Tetrarch of the territory of Acheria, and Trachonitis and Lysinius Tetrarch of Abilene, while Annas and Caiaphas were the high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, while he was in the desert. He went into the whole country round about the Jordan, proclaiming baptism as a mark of a complete change of heart and of the forgiveness of sins. As the book of the prophet Isaiah says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill brought low, and the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. We all have things that are special, must go we? And usually we put them on the top of our uh, best things list, things that we love. But I'm not talking this morning about people. I'm not talking about those things for your bucket list that you want to do before this life is over. I'm talking about priorities in your life. Those things that are important that you place in the top five, the top two, the top place in your list of things that are important to you and the way that you live your life. It reminds me of a story of a woman who was at a yard sale and she was she was really intent upon the items the merchandise in the sale and as she went around and checking out all of the things that were there she ran into the homeowner that was offering the yard sale got to talking with her and said you know my husband is really going to be upset with me for stopping at this yard sale and, and trying to assure the woman that it would be all right she said to the to the shopper i'm sure he will understand especially when you come home with all these wonderful bargains that you found she said well generally i would agree with you but this morning my husband is waiting for me because he just broke his leg and he's waiting for me to take him to the emergency room <laughs> Where do you think her priorities were? Certainly not with, her, not with her husband, for sure. Of course, that story has to be fictional. Has to be fictional. But the account from Luke about the, about the uh, baptizer, John the Baptist, is awesomely historical. John the baptizer, Jesus' cousin, was born for one reason and one reason only. And that was to prepare the way for the Messiah, to ready the world for the King, to allow the people to welcome Jesus because of the work that we do in advance of Christ's coming. Do you remember that Mary, the mother of Jesus, while she was with child, traveled a long distance on foot to meet with her cousin, Elizabeth, who was also pregnant with none other than John the Baptist. And the introduction of the two, even before they were born, was that John understood who Jesus was coming to be. Everyone understands that John becomes the, the prophetic voice in the desert prophesied to be there 
to tell everyone in the world about the coming presence of God here with us, God incarnate, Jesus the Christ. So you don't have to wear a camel coat. You don't have to eat locusts and wild honey in the wilderness to ready the world for Christ around you. You just have to have the heart and the lifestyle to make God and Christ and the season your number one priority. You see, in their time, back in their day, when a king was going to travel, the king would send a messenger ahead to prepare the people that the king was coming. Ready the world. Ready your town. Ready your life. Ready your heart. Luke wrote to a non-Jewish audience. Thank the good Lord for that. These words put you and I within the shouting range of John the baptizer. We can hear centuries before the message of prepare the way of the Lord as our mission, as our ministry, as our outreach, as our life prepares the world around us for the coming King. Now in their day, and still today probably in, in our world, many of the people, many of the priests rallied from their family tree. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they believed that they could inherit religion. That they could, they could take on the foundation of their faith family, their community. Their, they believed they were descendants of bloodlines that brought them to that place of being priests. I pray you know better. Because no one inherits salvation. No one inherits the kingdom of God. God does not have any grandchildren. Many of the religious leaders of John's day who were banking on that pious position as the gateway to heaven. We know that's not true because John the baptizer came and said to us, prepare a way and then get busy, get active, get going. The question this morning is, is your priority to do those things of preparing the way during this time of Advent with the time of your life for the rest of your life, preparing the way for the incoming of Jesus into the hearts of those around you? Because that's where salvation comes from. That's where God's grace comes from. From God. From the prophets. From us. To others. It reminds me of a young Coast Guard person who was on his first assignment and after so many months he got his, his first leave. He couldn't wait to get home to be with his fiancée and he had planned this wonderful evening. Going to take her out to somewhere very fancy. We'll wear our, our good clothes and then we'll take a little stroll along the boardwalk and see the moon on the ocean. It'll be so romantic. And things were working out really well. The dinner was exceptional. And then he said to her, let's just go out and stroll along the boardwalk and enjoy the moonlight on the water. And they came to the end of the boardwalk and she, his fiance was so enamored with what a wonderful night they were having. Let's just keep on going. Let's walk in the sand right along the water. Let's feel the water rush against our toes. He goes, are you kidding me? Do you see these shoes? Do you know how much work I put into the shine on these shoes? <laughs> Absolutely not. Now, if you've been in the military, you might understand how hard it is to get a spit shine on your, on your, your dress shoes. But again, it comes down to priorities, doesn't it? The sailor had his priorities on his shoes instead of his fiancée. Today, the priorities of our world seem like, seem to me, like we need to have John the Baptist revisit us to come and shout, prepare you the way of the Lord one more time. 
And I'm reminded of that old cliche when people do things that are different than they normally do. What's that old thing they say? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But isn't that just a way of not being accountable for the lifestyle that you live? What if all of your life was whatever happens to me stays with me and you can't see it and certainly you can't talk about it? You see, John's message does not allow any room for momentary muck that we so easily run into. Very pointedly, that John the Baptist was saying to us, get right with God, get to work. Step one, step two. Get right with God, get to work. And that's why the Christian calendar includes Advent. It is just a short time for us to get right and get to work. It is a time for us to prepare our hearts and our lives, to make a difference in the world around us, and to be ready for the birth of the King. And yet many spend this Advent time getting ready for Christmas by shopping, putting up lights, but they never address the dark spots within their own lives. That what happens in Vegas, or Gainesville, or Trenton, or Old Town, or Chiefland, that attitude doesn't cut it. That's not what Advent is about. Remember, sisters and brothers, God already knows everything that we do, we're going to do, we think, we say. God knows that. So listen closely to the words of John the Baptist. Repent and, and go straight. It's God advice through John to us. The question comes back again. Where are your priorities today? You have to repent during this time. Go straight. Go straight in your path towards the cross by way of the manger. That's how you prepare the way of the Lord. Because when you do, others will see and others will follow. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight Fill in. Get to work. And the children say, Amen. Amen.